It's just said it. Oh, yeah, no. Sorry. No, 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 please go ahead. I'm about to move on to the, oh. a question that someone had, so please go ahead. Oh, yeah, okay, cool. I was just going to say, um, yeah, uh, who was it? Uh, Super Obnoxious All Caps Name said, hearing about how many socialist movements sprout up naturally and end up succeeding is incredibly motivating and it's something that I never recognized before. And honestly, uh, you know, just like as a good like anti-black pill thing, looking at all these, um, yeah, all these movements that pop up, a really good, um, a good book, which is like a compilation of essays for that is um, called Revolutionary Optimism, Western Nihilism by Andre Vichik who um yes. is a a russian um russian author that grew up in america um will move to america when young and um it's very like it's really really good um there's like some stuff in it that is kind of like you know like it, it's not perfect same with like you know capitalist realism, realism or whatever but um it is really good at kind of um yeah and it is talking about like you know the the western nihilism is the black pill sort of thing and the um the optimism that comes from these movements in the imperial periphery and everything mm -hmm. um that are like literally like just like actually doing shit actually getting out there and just like you know they're like we don't have time to kind of worry about like you know like all this like twitter fucking doomerism or whatever <laughs> yeah. like that like we're actually busy like liberating our country sort of thing you know yeah. which i think is extremely base and super yeah. um yeah super motivating I don't mean to, sorry, I keep interrupting people because no. uh, the timing is off with, uh, oh, yeah, Evan, that's fine. um, uh, uh, that what a luxury it is to feel hopeless. What, what, what you know, the, yeah, the, yeah. The, 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 when people like, uh, when bad bunny was saying like, Oh, you had a response that was really good. I was surprised that that's the one that you like. Cause the, my typical response is like, things are too bad to be hopeless. Mm. Like, <laughs> yeah. I like that. That's great. It's yeah. kind of like That's great. so. What you mean by that is like basically, if I'm say stranded on a desert island or desert, I never know which one, and there's mm. I don't have any food, any water, whatever, and I have to like make it all. I don't have the luxury of sitting back and be like, oh, oh it's too hard. I'll yeah. never well, be yeah, able like, to get food. If, it's if you never take a minute, you like have literally to do a it. minute to you go need... to go. Oh fuck, this is really hard. That's a minute you are closer to dying of thirst mm -hmm. yeah exactly mm -hmm. exact, only yeah, it's like there's this like middle ground where it's like you if things suck but you have the ability to just cruise you know? mm -hmm. yeah. right but that's literally and, like that's wrong. why i was gonna say like this ties into what mule was saying about cuba what i was saying about like looking at climate change what tim was just saying and what mildred just said like literally like it is a western phenomenon of leftists going everything's fucked there's nothing we can do my girlfriend yeah. natalie has a fantastic line on this which is like um it's 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 a it's it's comforting it's comforting to imagine we're all gonna die because that means that there's nothing we can do and therefore nothing you have to do when the reality is uh loads of people are dying right now and you could yeah. do shit to stop that now and i know mm. that like as i'm describing that i'm actively taking some people's hope like away because some people are like <laughs> recoiling from that idea and they're like fuck no but i've already you know we've already said like the reality of the shit the the the, the fact of the matter is capitalism has failed and 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 some form of communism is coming and like people are independently invent this shit because it is just caring for one another and it is truly an imperial core privileged position to just be like yeah, it's fucked. There's nothing we can. There's nothing mm -hmm. we can yeah. do whatsoever. It's well, because we can rely situation. on. We can rely on uh, climate leviathan. Yeah, right. That's what I'm saying. Literally, yeah. like we could sit comfortably inside this shit while it's wrecking up everyone else's lives and killing just billions of people, mm -hmm. and be untouched. But be like relatively untouched by it. Especially just the more you conform into that society, literally. Yeah. So let's move on to the next question. Uh, Lit Lisa Simpson asked, um, there's a huge problem with the IRL organizing where the bright, shiny new folk just, folks just get burned out real fast because there's so much work. How can local organizers do things that restore people's capacity instead of taking it? I feel like the black pill and burnout are associated. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, they totally are, right? Because, you know, it's it's capitalism you know demands that we have an actual job in it we can't just like all Speak quit yourself, our buddy. jobs <laughs> <laughs> we can't just like quit it would be great and actually a lot would get done for socialism if we all did quit our jobs but obviously it's not do you know what i mean like some people's uh you know uh, yeah. direct capability to do so and uh you know you st most people who volunteer well that's why we're to organizing quit. to create the groundwork so people can exactly exactly people, people. and not this feel is, like they can't 
yeah yeah this is like a symptom of you know the the current situation right and things will improve the more and more organizing the more and more people who get involved in organizing and stuff like that so it's kind of like i don't know yeah it's not an invalid question it's a perfectly valid question uh but it is like yeah like the more and more <laughs> the more and more people get involved and the more and more people you know start to take ideas from our like we've said before like if this is something that you think is good copy us and do it yourself um you know the more and more people do that the more and more changes we're going to see in people organizing the more and more people are going to be doing it so there's going to be less work for people to do and that's mm-hmm. going to be easy to handle the way so, i think uh, the way yeah. i think about this is like we are all born into white supremacy patriarchy capitalism so on and so forth none of us were like agreed to it we just were surrounded by it and so we felt like it was just the thing that you do if you this is evident by whenever you ask anyone to like defend the systems of oppression that they that they that they think they they bear for they fall apart because it's just it's extremely easy to see them just ah, ah. and that's why they always end up blaming the jews or something like i don't know like that they they run to these scapegoats because if you actually do like start to examine the threads that you realize very quickly how how very like ridiculous this entire entirety of the situation is um yes. Similarly, the way that we are all kind of like pilled by by default by these systems because we are born into them, not because we agree to them. I feel the same way about um, any sort of movement toward communism. Like, and this is kind of this is a little bit of a side note, but it's also my 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 I beg and plead for you all to stop focusing all your energy on trying to de radicalize people. This individual case by case, I just can like debate them or argue with them, and then they'll finally see what my what what my point is. Um, mm. Like. I think that there might be there is some potential sometimes some good comes of it but I largely I think it's a big time sink because the we were never we were never convinced individually case by case that we agree to capitalism or patriarchy or or white supremacy or any of these systems we were just we if they just were there we arrived with them and then we went yeah no I'm going to rationalize this like like our human brain does um yeah so I forget exactly what you said, DJ Mule, to make me think of this, but um, it was basically um, along the lines of the environments around you will help to pill people. And like the more and more people are, and I know Sophie can speak to this like fantastically about how the, how the right works, how they always want to be in the in-group. They always want to LARP that they're like somehow fighting against some sort of big, uh, big Goliath, but they do always want to remain the in-group, the silent majority, if you will. Mm. Um, so I, I just want to say that briefly that if people are feeling like intimidated by any of these ideas, if they feel like, oh, how do I help this person with the black pill and so on and so forth, the collective <laughs> movement will be, in, in my opinion, extraordinarily yeah, effective because it has been mm-hmm. in that it all it effect made us all like gave us all brain worms without our consents. And we undid that to be here today to talk about it. Um, it's logical to assume that the same will occur if we keep pushing and keep fighting for what we're fighting for. Yeah. I think yeah. about this a lot, but there's a famous cartoon of a, a, a climate panel of a bunch of scientists looking at uh, global warming data. And one of them turns to the other and says, well, what if this is all a big hoax and we make everything better for nothing? <laughs> I remember that's, that. Uh, I remember, yeah, I've that's seen what so I think many about when people are nothing. like, mm-hmm. when so, people are uh, like, oh, well, cap- capitalism is uh, undefeatable. Uh, there's there's nothing we can do to, to right. turn it around. It's like, yeah, okay, but like you could give somebody a you could go out and give like a homeless person a sandwich, you right? Know, yeah, the, what if you make the world a better, better? You know, and he's not going to like slap it out of your hand and say, "Don't you understand that you'll never be in control of the means of production?" <laughs> <laughs> so, um, two, I have two things. The first one is uh, is is my girlfriend's reply to the the question that was asked, which I saw oh, in I was chat. Just point that out because I was like, I, I just wanted to say want... almost exactly the same thing. Well, and I, then, um, I, I wanted to it. highlight <laughs> it because like uh, I'm a wife guy for her, and she's a wife guy for me. That's how lesbianism works: is you're both <laughs> wife guys for each other and you're also the wife it's, it's a little hypocritical cool. but it's, it's fine. a it's a it's a cool system um but um 
uh, she said, extremely true. I think it's really important for people to feel like they can dip out when they feel exhausted and know that they can come back without any embarrassment. Also having lots of social incentive around the work. I think it's also important to plan what actions are going to be empowering versus draining in the organizing. Like at LIU, that's London Renters Union, which is where... Um, when that's been involved with a lot of stuff, we're always thinking, is this going to energize people? How is it going to build the union, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. All really big persistent challenges that need to, uh, I think it was cut off, but I need to be, you know, constantly thought about. Um, and yeah, I'd like to speak a little bit more about her experience. Like Nat has uh, like ha struggles with depression. Nat has ADHD and like she, she, burns out on shit really really quickly especially it's, it's a, a repetitive task that she's stuck on in the long term and that's just the job she's constantly doing like uh and that applies to even the stuff she cares massively about like one of the renters union and so she has had to like dip in and then she gets burned out and she has to not be in it for a while and dip back in and do do more stuff and yeah, it's okay for people to 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 do that and they need to know that it's okay to mm -hmm, do that mm -hmm. and i i think so First, this is all still part of my first point. I'm very sorry. <laughs> I'll, I'll try and be quick on both points. But um, firstly, London Renters Union uh, works as a, um, uh, 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 what is it? A uh, mutual solidarity um, organization or no, a member solidarity organization. And what that means is that it's completely uh, like an almost entirely acephalous organization where everyone is trained on everything when they enter so anybody can do anything and everybody can train any new member yeah. all the time which is really fucking cool and is a great way to enable the organization to grow as like maybe not as fast as possible but like in the most sustainable and powerful way possible yeah. and anybody who yeah needs to like dip out knows that everybody else in the organization has exactly as much training as them and so can definitely take over anything that they were going to do and they're not letting anybody down and it's okay um yeah yeah and uh, Del Delm said in the chat something about we got to rely on organizing not just mobilizing the same activists all the time the more we yes. delegate and diffuse the power the more collective capacity we have that's kind of the same thing right it's like instead of burning out these few people or whatever like that, if everybody is trained, everyone, and you organize in a way that, you know, allows people to kind of like step in and out and take over these different positions, which they're trained to do, then um, yeah, yeah, that's that's awesome. I feel like that's like, that really addresses. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Dalmatian is- Yeah, carry on anyway. Yeah. This is called being <clears throat> bus proof. If any one person is hit by a bus, the organizing campaign won't disappear. That's exactly yeah, yeah, yeah. it. And that's why uh, we and encourage to, everyone to copy our format, by the way. Everyone do it. Absolutely. Everyone Shout do what we're doing EJ. on your stream. Make this the new norm on Twitch. So it's like we it's not like this is the one place and the all the only people that do it. Everyone do it. Shout out to yeah, EJ yeah, and yeah. Luna. We already have one copy. Uh, we've got we've got uh, uh, people doing a weekly panel where they're discussing shit with different different guests already. It's did they just start that? Is that new? Yeah. That's in, so cool. I watched yeah. the first one. Yeah. Hey, it was yeah. good. It was good. Oh yeah, yeah. nice. Second, okay, second point. I've been spending the last year interviewing organizers and activists from around the world about what they do and how you can do it as well. It's called organizing interviews, and it's going to be on my channel. Um, go check that out if you want to see stuff you can get in involved with. Blah blah blah. I'm so great, but. Uh, a question I ask every single interviewee is, uh, I, because I know my audience care about accessibility and these exact questions is, how do you, does your org like cater to people who are disabled, who are stuck in the house, who have a full-time job or have kids, right? They have constraints on their capacity in various ways. And I've had a bunch of different inter interesting answers. I've definitely had some answers that were a little bit more like, eh, right? They were a bit more like, Eh, we have to acknowledge that people who have free time and capacity are going to be the ones involved with activism. And that is a valid answer. Like that is a partially valid answer. Like to some degree, the people who are going to be full-time activists and organizers aren't up to anything else. Right. And that does intersect with societal privileges. Okay. Mm -hmm. But other people like have given really rich and complex and fantastic answers about how their organization has deliberately tackled the challenges of accessibility and I'm not going to go into it now because we do have limited time, but go, you know, please watch my series when it starts coming out because like people have really good answers about exactly this topic, about how they have recognized that people need this kind of accessibility, especially under the pandemic. In some ways, it's been a blessing interviewing people at this exact time because loads of them have an answer that's like, we used to do this shit, but now we can't meet in person 
So we changed to this, and now more people are involved because they because people who otherwise wouldn't be able to come can just turn into a touching Zoom, like, grass click is into hard a for some of some of us. It's just exhausting. We don't have the time. It's just so much more yeah. accessible digital <clears throat> virtually. Yeah, literally. Stinky clothes. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> and that's gonna I'm gonna start airing those from uh, Friday. So that's uh, check those on my uh, on my channel. Cool. Also, just one small thing on that as well. Uh, if you're looking for a way to be of uh, if uh, to maximize your usefulness to effort ratio uh, to, to any organization, learn first aid or learn CPR. Mm. Uh, mm. People that can do those things and has trouble finding them. And the people that are trained in them typically have a lot of other shit to do. So you just being there and knowing that work off of a lot of people's plates. Really Serious. Uh, Co-sign that. And there's an, there's a, there's an additional one. If you ca if you can drive, you are already a god to many activist organizations. People who can drive, who can just get this batch of stuff from here to there, or transport these people to the to the action, or literally like uh, so, people who can drive, incredibly useful. It's so funny because it's this... actually like one of the things that uh, that like. Uh, when you learn about intelligence and surveillance, one of the things they look out for in undercover cops is people who have cars because, like, they're so rare and such an asset to orgs that cops know that if they show up and they're like, I can drive, everyone will love them. <laughs> <laughs> so also uh, work on proving that you're not a cop. Uh, if you yeah. <laughs> I, think, um, I think we've got an episode coming up with, um, is that the one we're going to do with Anansi's library about talking about, like, kind of protest riot kind of stuff yeah that's um, next week yeah. i'm really excited for yeah that yeah one. i've got so stuff to cool say about chat. that as well especially about like police infiltration and stuff but we'll, we'll save that for we'll, later. we'll talk about police infiltration we may talk about it next week we'll definitely also talk about it with tia who used to be in naval intelligence and so has incredible wow. is an incredible asset uh in You're terms rough. of telling us about like uh uh, uh infosec and opsec um oh, nice. probably talk about police infiltration more in that episode Rob okay. says that everyone should get a not a cop shirt, so there's no confusion. <laughs> yeah, that's a really good idea. I'll, I'll give you the other tips. I mean, what the other things people look out for in potential undercover cops is like no backstory. Like they they don't seem to come from anywhere. You, no one's ever met their family, and their job takes them away for long periods of a time. So if you can like, you know, if yeah. you if you if you do come from somewhere and you can be like, hey, here's my sister, and like. You know, yeah, yeah. If, also, you, if you are concerned about proving you're not a cop. <laughs> but, but also, that being said, if somebody is asking a lot of those questions, that's also a red flag. <laughs> yeah, 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 like, yeah. What other orgs yeah. do you work for? Where do you come from? What's going on? That's true. That's, uh, do, take a, yeah. do take a minute to be like, is this person a cop? <laughs> now people in the chat are like, wow, I'm actually a cop this whole time. No way. <laughs> oh, shit. Oh, no. Uh, we're all oh, cops. No. What the hell? Um, I love that you're talking about the value of like driving people and cpr because a lot of people have this idea of like the revolution's gonna be let's yeah. go and it's just like no <laughs> can you get your into your prius can you drive us yeah. a few blocks yeah, that's yeah, yeah. that's the thing uh, we need you to do things that yeah. are not as like sexy yeah. as you think it like this this fetishization of like revolution is this one day yeah. that everyone just like rises up spontaneously and just violent like it just that's not actually what it is but for some reason no. that's like the only idea that we're given and we have to like force another idea into place that's not how it works chat it's it's yeah. it's well, not how it works a, a weird side I, I effect think... of like the, the modern atomization we find ourselves in is uh, uh, robert evans uh who's worked as a conflict journalist has a fantastic line on what like modern civil war looks like because we expect modern like civil wars to be about like regions and there's this side and this side and his line is like in a in, like in a modern civil war like the buses still run it's just all their windows have been blown out by a bomb. And so they're yeah. all just like plasterboard instead. Like all the services are still there. You'll still go and queue at the post office and all of this stuff. You just could be killed in, a, in an insurgent mm -hmm. attack at any moment. Like mm -hmm. that's what this kind of unrest looks like in our time. Mildred was going to say something. Go. You go ahead. Yeah. I, I, in terms of just that, that idea that like uh, what a revolution is going to be is that like a bunch of people are going to storm into the White House and take control of the government, and then uh, we'll all get together and hash out how to do things later. It's like, <laughs> no, if you if you want there to be a revolution, uh, you have to create the conditions where a revolution is a positive development. Yes, yeah. and that means that because uh, like I, I like 
it, 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 like you can, the people who end up with power might not be the people you want, right? If you yeah, want yeah. to have a successful revolution, you need to create the conditions where a revolution is kind of redundant first. Yeah. <laughs> like that's, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm. yeah, you, you, you want to be in a position well, like where, where people thing, walking right? into the White House is essentially just a symbolic gesture. Yeah, yeah. yeah. This is, I mean, we were talking about this last time with the whole thing about that January 6th thing, how it's like, yeah, they didn't build dual power. They didn't have any plan or anything. So they just went in there and they milled around for a bit and then they went home. And it's like, this is, this is, you know, this is what happens when you don't, um, you know, you don't actually have a long term plan. You don't have, you don't have the people in place. You haven't done any organizing or whatever. It's just mm -hmm. this really kind of like, you know, no, like Tim, just... the revolution is when I take a shit in Nancy Pelosi's office. That yeah. is the yeah, revolution. Yeah, yeah. And uh, right. the real revolution is when you organize a general strike on Reddit by making some flyers. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, we've had yeah. 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 The, the, the Reddit general strike a few times now. Yeah. Already. Chad, if if... As we saw in the, in the UK this week, it's when about 20 drunk men dress up as Boris Johnson and get drunk outside <laughs> oh, wow. Downing Street. That's oh, what the revolution God. is. It was I, so yeah. fucking cringe. It I was feel so bad, bad for people. So brave. So brave. The people in the chat that aren't extremely online or extremely involved, and we're making a lot of references that a lot of you might not understand. Don't worry about it. It's some of us are honestly. God bless You're you for not knowing what we're talking about. If you don't, don't know. know, I I, I envy you for not knowing the, the vile shit that we have seen. Uh, God bless your heart. <laughs> You're in the. But if you do know what we're talking about, then you know what we're talking about. So don't worry about it if you don't. Um, <laughs> Do we yeah. have more questions in chat? Yeah, we there's do. a few questions. Um, yeah. There is a question from Crystal Cab, which I'm not sure. If, I think we kind of touched on it. It was um, basically, do you find when you talk to uh, libs that are moving left, are they blackpilling? And do you have any tips on radicalizing libs that isn't just doomering about capitalism failing them? I actually want to make a note of saying that I don't think personally that going up to every lib and radicalizing them is a solution to anything. Um talk i mean like i think that demonstrations especially at this point in in history time whatever when we see that people are by the by the their the material conditions and then and just them noticing how the voting blue does not count for anything and how the government really doesn't care if they live or die they only care if they go to work um yeah. i feel like that will serve as a a point of radicalization but then after that you have to fill in the blanks for them this is my feeling yeah. um that's why i don't i i think it's an extraordinarily inefficient and honestly kind of counterproductive like it actually harms the movement in my opinion if like we focus all our energy on like con persuading every single lib we know um yeah. i think it's yeah. more of like individually yeah. yeah i i just don't feel like it's i don't know that's my personal take so i i think that radicalization will i mean how were how was any of us radicalized a lot of us think yeah. it was like one event but it wasn't it was like <clears throat> it was a series of we talk about this all the time because yeah. every day i talk about how i used mm. to be like a chud and we and, and the and the things that have, you know how i think i got to where i am now and also how it's never one thing it's never one conversation so thinking that it will be is is kind of missing the point and i think you're kind of just it's just a waste of time and honestly kind of it's it's it, it might just give them a bad taste in their mouth at in any event you know about what we're doing so i think meeting people uh, like when say i say stuff like meeting people where they are but what i mean is if someone's evicted if they're a lib you know do a communism yeah. and help them if somebody yeah. is needing food do a communism and help them um yeah. i don't think that i think that that's not only more effective personally and doesn't require people to be like unblack pilled right I also, because they're already being helped, they're already seeing that this is a thing that is dem demonstrably good. <clears throat> but it also like is is a good thing. Like instead, of, it's like a really, it's what who cares about the end goal of communism in the moment that you're doing this? Positive things are happening, and that's that in and of itself is valuable. Um, yeah. So that's my weird roundabout way of answering that question. And I don't want to, no, I don't I think we should focus right. too much time I, on I, it, but yeah. I would just I like re reiterate what I said before, like common humanity collectives answer, which you, you already just reiterated it as well. It's just literally like the, the doing the, that stuff radicalizes people. Like just go and do the stuff. Uh, I did want to say something which I forgot to say before, which was like, while yes, we definitely shouldn't waste our time on like 
a, ma a movement of going to radicalize people and uh, mm. look, look, I made all these people leftists, therefore I'm the best leftist. Look how many people I've saved from being a chud. Um, if you heard policies, the good news. You really think about it. Right. But, but no, let me, let me counter and actually talk about have you heard the good news for a second. Uh, like, stuff we were talking about earlier, if, you, if, if there is someone who you do want to get across good ideas to, <clears throat> who they're in your life and they listen to you and they're teetering on the edge and like that, you, you know, if that conversation is going to happen anyway, don't just talk about how fucked things are. Yes. Talk about how fucked things are and how, and how leftism has answers and how right. we, there are things we can do to help people. That's what I'm like. That's what I, that's what I mean by uh, the good news. Like literally like the, the reason that like uh, uh, wing nut Bible bashes are like, the good news is like Jesus is gonna save your soul. Like yeah, yeah. in a similar way, literally just be just be like, don't don't just talk about how fuck things are. Absolutely, that's great for getting them to realize that you see reality like they see it, mm -hmm. and then go, so let's feed people. So yeah, let's I, do this stuff. <clears throat> yeah. There yeah. are steps we can take that are good here. Go ahead, Milton. I also I battles in it. feel this may be anathema to our mission statement here, but I think there is an element of with libs specifically, and when I say libs, I mean like, you know, center left, uh, like American libs, uh, that type of person, not just people in America, but like how Americans use that word. Uh, to, 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 with them, you kind of have to, you do have to black pill them a little bit. You, you, you kind of have to like show them like, hey, no, I don't think everything's fucked, but your solutions will never work, and here's why. Yeah, yeah. It's your your to, solutions like, specifically it are hopeless. Redo. It's mm. real. Yeah, yeah, it's a whole. Thing. Yeah. My infinite <laughs> yeah. growth is unsustainable, and yeah. how can you support that? So, are you yeah. saying that yelling out the n-word is not the strategy? <laughs> <laughs> huh? Wait, what? I thought it was tactical. Like, what? What is it? Is <laughs> oh, okay, I'm tactic? confused for a moment. Okay. To be fair, I haven't tried it. Okay. Oh, well, don't. Wow. Um, but, um, <laughs> don't. Uh, uh, I'm going to read UV Pod's comment really quickly. Uh, they said okay. an IWW guy, an IWW um, guy I knew once said that you shouldn't both try, you shouldn't bother try rad trying to radicalize people. Just get them working on a goal that, that, or task that's in their interest and thus likely a leftist one and capital will radicalize them for you when it pushes back. It's kind of, that goes hand in hand a little bit with what I was saying before. It's like, how do we get pilled initially that capitalism good you know whammons belong in the kitchen or you know whatever yeah. it's it's not sus when you're in a neighborhood full of white people as if you're a white person i'm speaking to white people right now specifically um or that everyone running everything is a white guy like why do we ever be like that's not something to be like what the fuck we're we you know it's 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 a lot of this like environmental pilling you and i think that that also can be applied to help the world you know by just yeah. it, it's already you know this is what you do you're gonna this is in your interest and you do the thing and then then the rest kind of falls into place Okay, yeah. I, I just want to I just want to say uh, to mock a killing bird said something really funny in the chat and it was a typo, but I think all the British people, so me and Sophie are gonna find this really funny. Microdosing the black pool to re prepare <laughs> yourself for the red pill. <laughs> so for those of you that don't understand why that's funny, um, we should dose Blackpool. Blackpool a, is water supply <laughs> is a very impoverished town in the northwest of England. So that's why that's very funny. Okay, yeah, just wanted to point that the, out. It's the Jersey Shore of Liverpool. It's the whole thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, there was another question that was, there was another thing that was Britain related and I wanted to say, I had a question. So Alexandro Broxo said, I had a question uh, early in the show for the Brovs. And I, I I think that you're using Brovs as a, like to refer to all British people. I don't appreciate it. Yeah, it's, it's personally, of, can you just terms not? Terms of service. Uh, Some Brits are birds. As well. Wait, why? Is I that mean for real? specifically because it's no. I mean sincerely that it, it it's it's a it's an abbreviation of like brother and like I'm I, I'm a so woman. So it's a misgendering thing. Got say it. that thing. Um, bird, I believe is noted. the term. I didn't yeah, know please, that. That's yeah, right. Exactly. Please call me bird or hen or uh, <laughs> hey you bitch like whatever like <laughs> yeah, um, birdophobia. By the way, but, all um, allowed on Twitch. These are all terms allowed on Twitch. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. I love that's like, true, like yeah. the ultimate Chevy slang stuff. Like that's so good. Like when you just can't even tell. Like they're speaking English, but they're just like speaking something else. Oh uh, yeah, so good. Roast over. Uh, Alexandra Brookso says. Um, not just to the host, but anyone who's who, who yeah, uh, like um, 
not just the host, but it's not really about any black pill. I think it kind of is, but this is for UK chat as well. Uh, is labor effectively Blairized? How much of old labor is there? Uh, labor's fucked. Uh, firstly, like this show doesn't really <laughs> cover is, like right? <laughs> uh, electoral politics that much because none of us really care. Uh, <laughs> but but like labor has been fucked since before Blair, but even more so since Blair. And Corbyn was like a breath of fresh air, but like you saw how hard the entire country worked to destroy him. It's fucked. It's not gonna... Yeah, no. And uh, also, I mean, electoral politics in the UK, like, we started out the stream, you might have missed it, but we started out the stream with a, a reading of, like, the bills that the Tories are going to try and push through, and several of them are about how hard they're working to make sure that no other party than the Conservatives ever wins an election ever again. So, yeah. um... <clears throat> Little yeah. bit, little I bit of I want to make sure we about... don't do this, talk about this too long because we want to talk about the black pill yeah, 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 a little no, bit I'm less in the stream. Yeah. So let's try to focus on the black pill question. Just a, just but we have a, a little here bit. especially because, because you know. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. So yeah, sorry. No, you can move on. The, you don't no, think no, no, I no, have you say what you think. on British electoral politics? <laughs> I was just, I was just saying, just <laughs> for a little, a little idea, just for a little idea of like the the state of electoral politics in the UK. So the the election where Jeremy Corbyn was supposed to be elected prime minister, there was a vote a turnout of sixty seven percent. Um, the registered amount of voters in the UK is 47 million, which is only two thirds, just over two thirds of the population. Um, and elect election, it's not, it's not mandatory. You don't have to vote. You don't have to vote. But just for an example, in Cuba, I've been learning a lot about Cuba recently. Uh, it's one of the <laughs> best boss countries. Baby vibes from this yeah. election. <laughs> it, right in in <clears throat> in Cuba. In Cuba, it is not mandatory to vote, and there is pretty consistently a 98 percent turnout. Jesus. Oh, wow. I mean, yeah, you build a better society, people are more interested yeah. in. Like, well, actually, it's actually not true. Up your vote mattering it, has a big impact yeah. on whether people vote. Yeah. Right, yeah. exactly. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 I mean, yeah, I mean, uh, in 2017, Jeremy Corbyn lost being prime minister by 2,000 votes uh, when there were, like, inside the party people working incredibly hard to sabotage him. Um, yeah. There are some people who, if any notion of justice existed in the electoral system, uh, would be in jail now. And Jeremy Corbyn would be prime minister, and we would uh, be be what like uh, four years into that term. Uh, think about how good that Britain would be. Uh, electoral politics is fucked. Let's move on. <laughs> also, also, yeah. Peter, Peter Mandelson is on Jeffrey Epstein's flight logs, and he is advising Keir Starmer. Cool. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Thanks tough. for that shout out. Shout out yeah. to my boy P Man. Yep. Yep. We, uh, anyway, let's go. Um, let's see here. There's I had a one, question. Uh, I was, one. I was gonna. No, no, no I you saw can someone. Rewind. I saw oh, a, I see yeah. one from uh, Crad Babes. Question: Major problem with the left in the last few decades has been the stepping back from the trash of educating the public in such a way as they can properly analyze and understand the problems and contradictions that have become so obvious to everyone, leaving the far right to step in with their answers. How do we go about that job of mass public education directly or indirectly and raising class consciousness? That's a good one. I mean, that's kind of, I guess, like um, a lot of that stuff is what we, all of us are kind of tackling in our own little ways mm. or whatever. But I'm, I'm guessing that um, Crabbage probably means more like, I guess, like on a community level as opposed to just like online mm. or whatever. Um, I don't I, know. I, like, I mean, I, I'm like constantly like, I would say like evangelizing but that's probably a strong word for it to um people around me and i think that like um one of the things that i try and focus on which is like seems like a, a just a total like mind-blowing concept to a lot of people and um on you know like twitter left or whatever is that um we just want to make communism cool again and like a big part of it is not just being a fucking weird nerd on the internet <laughs> so, which i think is like important um but you know like just like so you know like when i'm talking to people like even just at work you know like when i'm like tattooing people and talking to them about stuff or whatever like that there's like a lot of this thing like oh like you're a you're a communist like i thought that was like some weird like north korean thing some shit like that you know and it's just like no it's just like you know like this is a, a thing and it's like it is actually really normal and it's you know like mm -hmm. it 
like the reason why people yeah. think it's weird is because of like this protracted kind of like propaganda thing or whatever like that so a lot of it's just like being seen as like a visible communist like in your community whether it's yeah. like doing work just going about your business like whatever like that just like being open about your political ideas and aspirations yeah. I've is, even, um, i think a really important thing i've even said i tweeted this the other day that um i'm now just expecting everyone to be a communist and i just pretend i just expect that now i know that's not the case yeah. but it's not like I have to admit something to you <laughs> this whole time. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just like, yeah, it's a com, you know, we're co communists. Wait, you're not like communist. Like, wait, you're not. You would think this is working? Like, treating again. It's that. It's the thing we were talking about, or I was talking about a lot. It's the like environment just pilling you because you're you're there. And how do people get to where they are? They didn't make the decision. They were just part of the environment. If you just treat it like that's normal. I mean, it is. It's extraordinarily weird at this point. There's more and more normies are like, if they're not anti-capitalist per se, they are certainly not super excited about it. That's yeah, definitely I, yeah. for sure. A hundred percent. We certainly <clears throat> live in a more politicized age, right? <clears throat> and that means that a lot more people have learned about the way the world works to some degree. A lot of them live in a fake reality for sure. But yeah. like a lot of people have learned about the way the world works and that does make you baseline just like fuck that shit i remember yeah, i said yeah, to you yeah. like uh there's that old story like um kind of colonialist a bit racist story about this guy like the shoe salesman going to africa and they're like one of them one of them is like none of them have shoes yet so it's uh, sorry one of them's like none of them wear shoes so it's hopeless and the other one's like great marketing opportunity none of them wear shoes yet and now with that on no no with that aside i, I was saying to Mule like uh a lot of people seem to be like no one calls himself a communist we're fucked like look how few people how few communists there are and my perspective mm. is a uh, fantastic opportunity none of them have realized they're communists yet because yeah, like literally yeah. every fucking person <clears throat> wants to like take care of other people around them i know they just don't know it <clears throat> i know it's like a... go ahead Mildred. Said in the... Mule... oh yeah, yeah go yeah. I mean, no, it's just I, I think I, I fundamentally disagree with the premise of the question that the left has done a bad job of educating people. I think it's oh, I instead, mean, like, yeah, yeah, compared well, to like I, in, I, in, I, in, I'm not facing that, the odds, it's like, wow, like you've yeah. actually done a really good job. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, but like the 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 yeah, the the way that the media landscape is 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 controlled and owned by like billionaires. Mm -hmm. So of course it naturally reflects the capitalist perspective yeah. like the entire education apparatus it's all designed to like not let people yes. think of these things yes. and the fact that like these ideas don't go away ever no matter like the the unbelievable amount of of uh barriers in the way to having these ideas and the fact that people still have them i think speaks to like how like if tomorrow you were able to kind of snap out all communists and socialists and every work of theory that's ever been penned within 10 years there would be another communist movement a thousand because, percent. It, yes yeah. yeah a hun yeah absolutely agree I, I, so, also, yeah. I also had issues with the question i do think like we've done a bad job eh, the left has been deliberately eradicated for centuries by um yeah. evil scumbags the but, most yeah, powerful it's kind of a, like, like, i don't have like one sided on the planet yeah. I mean, yeah, it's, yeah. it's the most powerful entity that is like that is has infiltrated like every essentially lit almost every aspect of our like existence more or less like even our own like even Neil sex toys to like masturbation is now infiltrated by capitalism even like even our feelings like our emotional realizations is infiltrated when we go to therapy that's infiltrated by capitalism our ability to like live yeah. is now is yeah. now gay kept by capitalism in, in a multitude of ways in the most intimate of ways like the fact that we're still able to ha do have this movement i think is a is a is a success and should not be like devalued yeah, personally. yeah. mule yeah, yeah, was holding absolutely. on to something and i feel no, bad because we no, like forgot forgot no forgot. Uh, all right you guys start know, you, got, you gotta start writing these things down mule i, I have yeah, yeah. a fucking notepad i have a notepad <laughs> <laughs> Bring my brain is not my brain is not normal that's all it is this is now an ableist oh, like, stream um, i apologize i can't believe you've done ableism i'm sorry <laughs> chud yeah. bunny does a no growth i'm again. sorry i'm Bully back to my roots I can't. <laughs> no, I, think, um, um, I, I guess to like, come back to it a little bit like i yeah. think um like one thing that is um really good like i mean because like the main thing right is like the 
like tying in the um the struggle that people see around them to class consciousness and stuff like that and like a way that you can do that in your community aside from just like you know like being a cool communist or whatever is um i think like you know like when you look at things like um the way that you know like people became radical radicalized in the early days in vietnam also in um i think with the black panther party and stuff is like things like reading groups where it's like people uh just you know like not just uh kind of you know like uh if you're doing like you know community organizing in other ways or whatever like that you can always kind of like start um getting together with you know like the people that you're working with or whatever and just like reading through theory together like not just like a book club where you go away and you read it and come back together or whatever like that but like you know like actually sitting down in a room together and reading things and talking about them and stuff and this could be like example you know like uh like writings by people that or written works by people that are revolutionaries or that is like relevant to whatever your org is doing or whatever like that but i find that um like any time that i've been involved in any kind of like irl sitting in a room with a bunch of people that you know have the same ideas or even just like people that are kind of like maybe a little bit more liberal but they're you know they're here because they like you know maybe they saw it, like uh, around like the blm kind of times and stuff like when the george floyd protests were happening there was a lot of liberal people showing up at like prison abolitionist kind of orgs and things like that just for meetings because they're like i don't know what's up you know whatever mm -hmm. and so the you know there might be people that are like a bit more liberal or whatever but actually sitting down and talking about these ideas is like a really um like a galvanizing experience and it's i like can speak for that personally very, yeah. yeah 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 something that like gets people excited and like you know even though even if you only have like you know like 10 people or less in the room or whatever like that all those people are going to get excited and they're going to go out and they're going to be talking about mm -hmm. these things at work or whatever like yeah. that so i think like yeah. that's like a small thing that is like very um like it's difficult to kind of like um you know like it, like to kind of um downplay the effectiveness of it like things right. just little things like that you know like yeah, yeah i think that's anyway, that was probably little that's something that's come up across organizing interviews every time I've asked people about like oh wow yeah cool reaching out to people literally like consistently across organizations I have people being like uh read books together like get people to read a cool book read. with all the ideas in it please read yeah. a book like and when Emmy was on she was just like we yeah. just just have to read theory there's no other way around it uh pretending like we people can just not read theory isn't actually people would get them to read the theory that's what she, she was i think she i think she said like um uh what the fuck was it she was just like if everybody if everybody read theory it would be solved tomorrow <laughs> like yeah, which, yeah, you know, yeah i mean not completely i'm sure there would be a lot more arguing but like the most but of it we don't know what we have to do yeah. the <laughs> biggest bit right um and you know uh to bring back to chc the interview i did earlier today they literally were saying like what they do is they're on a Zoom call with people while they're making uh, masks. Like they, they make masks to give out to people and they make like air purifiers for people in Oakland and shit like this. And while they're on a Zoom call and they're individually working on their batch to get through, they're reading like Rosa Luxemburg or whatever and then yeah. chatting about it. And that's just like, fuck yeah, just do that. Like yeah, yeah. that rocks. Yeah, totally. There's, um, yeah, I saw, um, I've seen a couple comments, people saying that they have trouble reading and they have trouble doing those kind of stuff. Like as a kind of group exercise though, it's a lot easier because like, even if you're just like taking turns at reading paragraphs to each yeah. other or something like that, it's, um, it's a lot easier to kind of get through. And then you know, like talking about stuff mm. at the end of chapters and all this kind of stuff, because I mean, like a lot of theory can be dense and it can yeah. be, you know, like it's easy just to get in that mode where you're just skimming through or whatever. But if you're actually like doing it as an activity, then I think it's a lot easier to kind of take in. And, um, what? yeah, tale of two rabbit also mentioned there's a power to storytelling that a lot of lefties don't realize and that it actually like ties in a lot to you know like there's like a lot of indigenous stuff about like group storytelling and group um, yeah. oration and things like that which yeah. is like yeah once again a very like community building kind of um exercise well, well, yeah, I just, so... um, go on, oh Will. sorry go on no go, yeah, i interrupted you before go on. Okay. Oh my god thank Mule. you i know <laughs> i love you um okay so yeah i i was saying to uh birdie blake uh because again like tim said people were saying like i find it struggle a struggle to you know uh, absorb this stuff sometimes there's like a lot of people who make theory like very accessible 
um you know in in different ways like you know just making videos about it there's two there's, two, there's three people who do this in this panel right do you know what i mean it's like a lot easier to kind of understand the basis of, of a lot of theory if you like consume leftist content on youtube and stuff like that of course it's not like the same as reading the whole book but as long as you get like the basic idea because i think a lot of people get tied up in a, uh, uh academics right academia it's like okay you have to completely have read and comprehended all of the fucking diagrams and maths that Marx does when he's talking about the length of fucking linen, right? And it's and like, yards no. of linen, yeah. I you still know? have nightmares about yards of linen. God damn right. it. Check the math too. You have right. to make sure oh, yeah, calculations. You, you go <laughs> read it. <laughs> That's right, exactly. And if you find one error, which you will, then it's not okay. Like Marx is I would love bad. to find an error in Capital right. and cancel Marx. That'd be so good. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I think yeah, it's important. It's important to remember that. It's important to remember that. Like, yeah. And I think the uh, Tim, like what you said, is like so important as well. Like, yeah, there's there's a lot of things that that we don't do because of alienation. Uh, you know, like these these reading groups and stuff like this, and like you know, storytelling like around you know with friends and stuff is so valuable, and it's something that we don't get. Nine times out of ten, when people get get together as friends in the UK, they just like get so drunk they almost die. Do you know what I mean? It's like, it's like what what are we achieving here? Like you know, is, has anyone learned anything? No. Um, so yeah, really good point. Really good point. I so wanted to add on to the uh, storytelling thing that like uh, I, I I wanted I, I intend to make video games. It's one of the things I want to do in life, and uh, all of those video games are going to be exactly along that idea like i want to communicate ideas to people and i think the single best way you can actually communicate ideas is through a story and part of the reason that i found this again climate leviathan joel wainwright jeff mann uh like so compelling is that it's about the future we actually like one thing that we've been lacking and we definitely lack when we when we're black pilled and when we're doom pilled that we can get when we think about the future is a story that we fit into like people don't have a story that they fit into for communism they're just like this is a theory of how the world would work if things were good but they have a story that's like human nature is so bad we're so selfish that we ch yeah. choked the planet and burned all the trees up and all this shit and they fit into that as like another greedy consumer or whatever but like if you can fit into a story that's to do with the collapse of a system and people caring for one another and building you know networks to take care of one another I think that's beautiful and i think it also like is a good way to communicate to people what needs to be done and what's <clears throat> happening yeah well um i think this is a good point to uh wrap up the discussion um oh, yeah. we could take questions all night but you know we are about to i mean we have like a minute left in like time but we're probably gonna go a little bit over because we're gonna have to talk about the homework so let's first of all um yeah you know let's let's, let's talk about homework let's talk about homework um homework chats did y'all do it do you remember what it was our chatters good the chatters behave <laughs> chat i'm very curious about this homework because it was it was a really big step up and like it's fu like the homework thing is all kind of tongue-in-cheek obviously like it's always fine if you don't mm -hmm. just do anything yeah but, yeah like, but i'm like... curious to see the translation between week one we were like go and join a union Week two, we like get involved in an, a, some kind of action, be it through a mutual aid network and you're helping people get what they need or- Even say hi to your neighbor action. and introduce yourself to your right. neighbors. I just want yeah. to shout out what Putbug said in the chat. I tried, but it's going to take me more than a week. Yes. Huh. Yeah. Yes. That's okay. Yeah, that's, that's cool. yeah, you know, so don't Valid. feel bad if that's the case. And don't feel bad don't if you're about it now and you just No, you must do it within a week or it doesn't <laughs> yeah. count. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Your communism has failed now week, because you've all too missed late it. and communism can never come. Thanks a lot. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Damn it, pup. <laughs> God damn it. Um, yeah, I... Yeah, that's really interesting. Uh, one other thing we have to check in on at the end of this stream is we we checked earlier people who were feeling about people who have had like belief that things could change or or, or didn't have that belief. Mm -hmm. So I guess I'm curious to see from people who put a zero earlier in the uh, earlier in the stream, or if you would have but you didn't. Basically, if you at an earlier point did think we're all fucked, we're all gonna die, capitalism cannot be shifted. 
I want to see ones if we've changed your mind on that and zero if we haven't. Because I'm just, just for those people, I just really want to know, like, I hope that we haven't shifted anyone <laughs> from having hope this... against it. So everyone but who I feels... specifically want to know. Like... Yeah. And if everyone else who wants to feel involved, because I know chat always wants to press something. If you feel <laughs> like you were already hopeful and you still feel hopeful, press two. So okay. zero, if you don't feel hopeful and you didn't before, you still don't feel hopeful. Oh. One, if you didn't before but now you do because after the stream and two if you're like i'm always been hopeful bitch all right look at these look see they love they really, love really to fucking make some people out. liars love... in chat there are so many they love liars. when you say bad words okay <laughs> i've seen at least two people who we did help and that's that's really all i wanted so why don't we have a <laughs> one <laughs> <we have two, laughs> make some people feel to get to get that you know to get mm -hmm. well here's the thing chat every single episode of this show is going to be about killing the black pill it's just that today we explicitly kind of talked about the topic in a yeah. little kind of a meta way but every sure. single episode will be about demonstrating successes um about what you can do like actual like a, if you don't have to do everything you can focus on one thing one thing you feel very strongly about and that can be your thing kind of like picking a picking like a like a major in college or something like that but instead it's you know it's like a focus <laughs> You know, for the, you know, your little, little baby, little yeah. commie, little pog champs in the chat. Yeah. Mm. Um, <laughs> commies posting W's. That's right. Yeah. Um, yeah. And it's, um, there. Are, you know, <clears throat> there are people who are saying zero, but that doesn't mean I'm stopping. Yeah. Like, that's great. Like, that's the attitude that, you know, we want to inspire in people. It's a lot to unstick. Day, it's because, yeah, like I, I said, no, no perspective is ever achieved in like, a conversation without like seeds already planted and beforehand uh yes the fact that you even like you know, when you're having a conversation with the person they change your mind the fact that you even had that conversation with them has a whole bunch of there's a whole bunch of series of events and a mindset you've had to adopt to be able to get be in that place but i mm. if you think that you know i'm not quite there yet but i do think i could be i think that you're on you're totally on the right tr uh, track and it's nothing to say there's th nothing wrong with you or anything like that just for the record yeah and, oh. and if it if it was a choice between someone who had no hope and chose to act anyway, and someone who had a great deal of hope and did nothing, uh, <laughs> I would, the first yeah. one, please. Yes, yeah. absolutely. That's yeah. a really, really good yeah. thing to, say, add, to add, yeah. Um, Such a good point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, all, and also, like, all of this, like, chat participation stuff, we want you to feel involved, uh, but uh, we don't want anybody to feel judged or anything like this. And, yeah. like, absolutely. There are no deadlines on any of this shit. We're, when we're giving people homework, we're giving people really... Just a, a little suggestion for something that we think would be cool and good and make you feel good and also like improve things. So mm -hmm. like with that in mind, this week's homework. Um we I felt a little inspired by Mildred's video of Slime World, where she outlined a, a a better possible world. And I thought, why don't we get our chatters to go into their community, just where they live, just go go and look around and look at stuff. And imagine what it would be like in your ideal world. It might not be physically different, right? For example, we had that McDonald's thing earlier, right? It might not be physically different. It might not serve even a different purpose, really. But like, it might work in a different way, right? Think about how it would. That That's the homework for this week. Just mm -hmm. go and have a little, little look around and, and think about it. And... Um, if you want to, if you have any kind of bright ideas that you think are really mm -hmm. neat about about the way that the world will be better, why don't you tell us on Twitter? You could just tag us and yeah. be like, "Hey, yeah, oh, we love I that." Looked we at my McDonald's. I sure. looked at my McDonald's and I thought, "Hey, this is how McDonald's would. This is how that would function if people just got yeah. food for free, mm -hmm. for example, yeah. right?" Sometimes there wouldn't be a McDonald's, but like Sophie said, they're either there could be a completely <laughs> physically different thing, or it could be the same stuff, yeah. but it's like transformed in its function or whatever. Um, go ahead. Whoever's gonna, I talked over like I was three people. Say, um, and if you wanna, and if you wanna, if you need some ideas or anything, there's um a game that we've mentioned a couple times on here by um Calestia called A Bewitching Revolution. Yeah, it's on um itch. I'll I'll send a little link to it. I'll put it in the chat. It's a fun little game. You can like pay what you want for it. Where you are the little witch of the city, and you walk around your city, and it's your job to do, do magic to um to kind of remake the city into this mm -hmm. kind of like little like you know communist town or whatever like that and so it's basically just going around and like you know like looking at things and then you're like okay well um you know like this would be better if it was like trees or something like mm -hmm. that you know but um it's all about you know community gardens um building organizations so cool. unions, things like that it's really fun and it's just like 
a cool little thing like you might do and then you know when you're like walking around your city you might be like oh yeah remember when you know like this was a thing or whatever mm -hmm. so that's like a fun little thing you can do as a little aside for extra yeah, the credit game is a, the game not, is that's not your homework long. that's extra credit that's the yeah. thing the game is an hour long so it's not going to take you long to play at all it also contains a line better than any theory i've ever read even though it's yeah. just an hour-long video game which is that there's there is graffiti on the wall in the prison while there is a prison riot going on and it says they can shoot us to death but they can never shoot us back to work and i was just like i saw that and i got chills and i think yeah, about yeah. that line every day of my life <laughs> like right. that yeah, fucking yeah. rocks <laughs> mm. <laughs> There's, also, um, there's a lot of really good little lines there. But yeah, anyway, I want, awesome game. Game. I want to make sure that we do this because it's kind of a little bit of a backtrack. But if you're anything like me and you go out and you do a thing, you kind of want a little bit of like a teacher, I did it. So <laughs> if you did yeah. the homework for last week, press one in the chat. I want to see who did the homework. I want you all to feel like you got your little gold star. <laughs> who did the homework for last week? We'll who also give went, gold reached out, on Twitter. Would talk you to tell us about your ideal world a bit? Talk to a neighbor, you joined an org, you you did some sort of real world, basically did like a real world communism, essentially. <laughs> press one if, if you, you instituted that. global communism. If press you made one communism. Yeah, if you destroyed, if you if you abolished capitalism, please please press Even one. just within <laughs> your own house, you know? <laughs> it's, it started small. Yeah. yeah. I'm liking this. This, this is, is great. Nice. This there's actually like a lot more ones than I thought because it is like a bit more of an ask. Yeah. Um, and there is definitely like some people who were like here previously they might not be here now who were saying before that they started doing stuff as well so there's extra i need mm -hmm. to highlight a really interesting message that i see in the chat here which highlight which explain which backs up something we've been saying the entire stream mr fishy says one yeah. hence why i'm a two today yeah Chris. They yes this chat already has yes both. Because they took part in something since last week. Nice. How fucking cool is that? Oh, that's fantastic. Because <laughs> last week, uh, Mildred, last week, the week before at least, the, the homework was to join a union. Or if you're in a union, join another union. If you're already in another union, you can do an extra credit and be like, you know, get somebody else in a union. But uh, a lot of you joined unions and it was super cool. So I guess that extension of that is now your part. You can be participating in some sort of an organization, which is awesome to see. So sick. Very so fucking cool. cool. You will get so yeah. much. You will get so much hopium from going and doing this stuff. Like it's it, it's like we've said already. It's like <clears throat> once you go out it's there. It's wild see, how get, much. We get. We, yeah, yeah, it is. We get trapped in our, like, it's not the same as the, the liberal mind prison, but we get trapped in, like, our own version of a, a mind prison where it's, like, um, G Jesus Christ, like, everything's fucked, like, and that's mm. it. Especially if you just don't, and I, I know it sounds, like, really, you know, uh, ha harsh to say, but, like, if we just don't bother and just, like, don't really, you know, get involved with anything, then, yeah, of course, like, it's, like, a, a self-fulfilling prophecy. You are yeah. going to end up feeling shit. And I think the best thing that we could end on um, is just, you know, reiterating that, like, this is how capitalism wants you to feel. Mm -hmm. This is how the media wants you to feel. So you don't organize. So you don't join a union. So you don't speak to your neighbors. So you don't mm -hmm. develop a loving and caring, empathetic you just lie down and vision rot. of the world. Right. Yeah. That's what they want. While working. <laughs> right. Yeah. Uh, Somehow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Believe it or not. The... the most people who don't know a lot of socialists in real life find it very cringy to call someone comrade. But <laughs> when, when you're in a room full of people for the first time that all agree with the shit that you've always felt is this fringe outlook on the world, and they're telling you, like, no, you're not going mad, like, I agree with you. Yeah. It's a sense of camaraderie you don't get other places, and it's very yes. uplifting. It is extraordinary. Yeah, yeah. and you can't... Powerful. Don't think that... An, I'm not saying this to try to like alienate anyone who is physically unable to to enter certain spaces, but there is something extraordinarily special about like phys. I know COVID makes it hard too as well, um, and also work schedules, blah, blah blah. But physically being like you said in a room with a bunch of people that like people, not like people, like you can like wow, you're an actual flesh and blood, and we all are in agreement. We all have this like it's a very like intimate connection that you already have and it's it's really it's so like inspiring and like just 
it's awesome it's just fucking awesome and it's 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 really hard to mimic that really anywhere else um and sometimes we feel like that's not the like oh that can't be that awesome because all we have is like twitter or something or or a twitch chat room now don't get me wrong experiences like this i think are extraordinarily valuable but i think there's something irreplaceably valuable um about joining an organization and like being yep. in the presence of mm -hmm. others that are you know yeah. on board with this shit other comrades if you will anyways did the red panel host did the red planet hosts do the homework this week did any of us do a thing IRL? <laughs> I am desperately trying to get in touch with. Wait, the I didn't know I had to do homework. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I, just, I, thought me, I, just I, thought I did enough. I just want to I, reassure, um, reassure the chat further that you don't actually have to do it by uh, by talking about whether we did. Yeah, yeah. Like it, here's <laughs> oh, the thing. Yeah. This, this is why it was projection, really, when I was talking about that person who said it was going to be more than a week. Um, <laughs> right. Because, like, yeah, I've been desperately trying to get a hold of the 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 organizer from a one six one community that we spoke about last week. Oh, um, cool. Sometimes it's just hard to get a hold of people, and yeah, someone got in touch with me. I've got ADHD, as you've witnessed here on the screen tonight, <laughs> and they texted me when I was thinking about something very important, obviously, and I just forgot to respond. So, you know, it, it's a thing, it's a thing, but yeah. it, progress, I think, and now I'm being serious, progress is not linear. It's yeah. not linear. Just because you were going like this and something like this brings you like that, it doesn't mean that you're like back down here. Yeah. You, when you pick yourself up, you're back up here again. And you just have to keep going. That's all it is. Mm -hmm. Nobody can ask you to do better than your best. Yeah. Right. The revolution will happen next week when Mule remembers. Nobody can ask. <laughs> <laughs> when all I right. remember, you did a thing? Mule is about yeah. to uh, institute the revolution, but we kept interrupting him. So. <laughs> You're right. You're so right. You know, I that one quick trick for, for revolution. We all, we all distracted him. Sorry. And we're yeah, yeah, him again. Yeah, yeah. Look at him. Look at him. He's losing him. it. He's losing his um, mind. I'm cutting him off in the moment <laughs> while we're talking about cutting him off. You have to cut me off. Tim, you did I'm thing? so yeah, sorry. Yeah. I was just gonna say I um really I sorry. do a lot of stuff where I um volunteer my time to like groups and orgs and stuff like that just to do like art and design stuff. Um, so I've done a couple things um lately. One of them just um I've just started for last week, which probably counts as something. You know, working towards um an IRL thing is probably what I've got. Um, but yeah, you know, like doing stuff like for um groups like papa and like um organized Aotearoa and all the kind of stuff like that i've done like little things here and there but um there's one that i'm working on at the moment that i can't really say too much about what it is because it's not like a public thing yet and um it's kind of something that might be like i guess like i don't know i don't want to like legally right. like i don't want to say anything about it just yet but um but is yeah a, yeah is it a surprise party for me you can it's, it's okay it is it is <laughs> I knew it. She found but, you know, like, um, I knew it. There's, there's a lot of stuff that you can do that are working towards our goals that aren't necessarily just like, you know, like going out and, you know, like, I, I guess, you know, like there, there's like, if you're a creative person, there's creative yeah. things you can do um, and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. So yeah, that's probably my homework for the week. I would say. Very cool. <laughs> well, I think what we're going to do now is uh, wrap up this, by thanking uh, Thoughtslime for being here and everyone can clap for all of us. And then I think we're gonna uh, say goodbye to you all. And then I will do a full screen and say the next, the last few thank yous to the to the donor donors and then we'll we'll raid somebody. So chat, put your hands together. Bun clap or bun clap F if you're not a subscriber. Let's please, all thank Thoughtslime. Please. Please. No, no, no. You couldn't possibly clap enough. Don't, don't worry. <laughs> Listen. <laughs> Let's elevate you on the tippity top of this hierarchy. <laughs> and uh, thank you, right. our guest, for being here. Actually, super, super thank you. And it's really great to finally to be able to like- My pleasure. Yeah, it was, it's fant I, I'm, I'm a fan. And so this has been cool for me. And uh, we've watched on yourself. I know a ton of people in my community are big fans of you. And um, thank you for, for being so awesome. Thank you for being so tirelessly awesome and um, making such a great content and being such a kind, like consider it just a just a good fucking person i know just just whatever mm. but i think you're a great person yeah i know it's disgusting i'm sorry they hate I, this so much nicole i, I don't <laughs> care I, really, I don't care it's just it's for me at this point it's not even about you it's not about anyone. It's just for me you're the best <laughs> oh, 
but no, I, honestly, you're best. fantastic. They showed me a horrible thing in Cringe they're Squad yesterday, back. and I, they're never when you back. see, oh. you, you're going to retract all of this. You're going to be like, how could you treat Sophie like this? <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, so thank you so much for being Chuck here. Chuck Bunny and... calls Sophie's abuser the best. <laughs> <laughs> can you believe it? Yes, I can. Oh, okay, so um, oh, make God. sure you drop, a, can can mods in the chat, uh, oh, so uh, Chloe already did it. There's last time's Twitter. Uh, and Thought Slime's YouTube. Um, if you want to f huge tube, if you want to uh, follow Thought Slime on Twitch, you don't Twitch, you don't stream as regularly, nearly like I, every I, Thursday. I, oh, I, oh, never mind. Every Thursday. Um, every okay. Thursdays are my super Monday, so I, I literally am the dumbest person of on course. Thursday. So that's probably why I didn't know that. Um, so yeah, make sure you uh, drop a follow to there. Thank you, thank you, Chloe. <laughs> I'm trying to figure out how to be a mod, <laughs> but anyways, uh, everyone. Uh, follow Thought Slime on all the things everywhere. Like, subscribe everywhere. Um, follow say me nice around things. if you see me on the street. Yeah, <laughs> high, high five. Give them, uh, give them cash. You know, it's just a nice thing to do to to a comrade. Just give them. That you know, is, yeah, <laughs> that's right. I don't know. Anyways, but uh, thank you so much for being here. And um, my pleasure. Yeah. All right. Cool. And thank you again, also to all the rest of the hosts. Um, we have Conquest of Dread. So YouTube.com slash uh, Conquest of Dread. Can we just do that? Yeah. Is that YouTube? How do you, yeah. Okay. Then we have DJ Mule. Yeah, yeah. Who has a YouTube channel, but mainly streams from Twitch.tv slash DJ Mule. Uh, also found at Twitter.com slash DJ Mule one. And then we have... Uh, no. Sophie... DJ, DJ Mule, Mule underscore. underscore. Yeah. Oh! Who am I thinking <laughs> of? Close. Close. So close. God. I'm really blowing it, aren't You're I? You're probably thinking of the username you said. <laughs> that probably is what I'm thinking. <laughs> and then we have. You've so taken on too much work, Nicole, because you normally make us do this. Yeah, we would do this. Uh -huh. We would do this. Well, okay, she's okay. You know of, what, Sophie? She's then... just sick of us. She's just sick of hearing us speaking. <laughs> then, Sophie, go ahead. You shout yourself out. Well, I am Sophie from Mars. I'm Sophie from Mars on all the platforms. That you can find me. Uh, Sophie from Mars is where my YouTube channel is, where I do video essays and stuff. Oh, and shit, organizing interviews that I was talking about this whole stream that's where oh, that yeah. will be so go youtube search sophie from mars or it's youtube.com slash sophie from mars i've said my username too many times now and it's yeah, see, it's not like so a easy no is it a non so word easy. It doesn't like make a, sense a, a anymore sound. it's not real but yeah. um organizing interviews will be there and it'll be weekly from next week so like go check that out it'll be cool all right by the way sophie from mars red planet just got that today <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's a little cute little connection yeah also, we're huge well fans of Elon Musk, clearly. So, like, oh, yes. like obviously, oh, Red Planet, let's go. Colonize Mars, It's the first Mars account that the Twitter followed, yeah. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> That's was. actually like, yeah, really yeah. funny. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, thanks, chat, for joining us. And we will catch you next Sunday at 2 p.m. Pacific, which is 5 p.m. Eastern. And then some other times in the UK and elsewhere, which you would think I would know this by now, so you know. Yep. Everyone 10 p.m. Except... UK time. Thank you. Yes, and thank you. 11 a.m. 11 a.m. on Mondays in New Zealand. Yeah, because 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 yeah. Tim lives in Slime reporting in. Yeah, I think I they do, bought I it. <laughs> oh, I'm still <laughs> <laughs> on the phone to the sky. I oh had on it. <laughs> All right, bye everyone. Shit. I'm getting I'm getting oh, bailing. No. Revealed. But I later. say what it's going to be next week. We're going to talk, gonna talk oh, about yeah. protest and riot tactics with the Nancy's yes. library. Bye. Yes. Bye. Bye. Bye.